Hello. Oops, forgot to turn off this little uh, pink doodad. Let me, let me turn that off for one second. This needs to be empty, empty style. There we go. Yeah, all right. Welcome back, guys. I'm gonna do this little truck today. I'm pretty excited about it. Looks very fun. Yeah, I wish there was a way for me to see the chat. Live from the toilet today. How's it going? Oh man, I am so slow. <laughs> I feel like a senior citizen status. citizen status <laughs> completed okay hey Barbara hey Dee Dee yes Michelle this is your hat okay guys attempt number attempt number 10 with this uh, Nintendo Switch controller I think it's this this time is gonna be be the one. I got this pop up working, the color pop up, so it stick it pops up under your mouse and it um, it's at a reasonable size now because before it was like taking up the whole screen and it was a little bit crazy, but this is better. Yeah, there we go. And you can use this to color match too, so I think it'll be fun. And then we got our pie here. Pie's been uh, improved. Now it highlights to show you what's um, what you've picked. Because before it was kind of a crapshoot. So what are we doing here? Maybe Phil? Again, Phil is like my favorite thing in the world. I use it for everything. And it gives you like this auto perspective. I kind of like. Okay, what else do we have? Yellow. Pretty bright, bright yellow. Ooh, maybe too much. More blue. Maybe less uh, color jitter. Vitautus. Still haven't finished the cat yet. I'm going to post that later on. Oh, you guys know each other? from Spain. Did you guys meet up in Spain? Uh, all right, what are we doing? Darker.
we can use um hmm, pills. Let me try pills. the hell? Shit. Airbrush. Oh, there is no tool called airbrush. Damn it. Oh, shit. It's called airbrush noise. That's why. There we go. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> what am I saying? I think, I, th I think the trucks are actually not that hard compared to the cat killed me <laughs> yesterday. That cat was tough, and also my back was killing me. But I tried, I tried drawing people the other day, and that also killed me. So I'm gonna just stick to stick to trucks today. Comfort zone. Okay, so this is being okay. with this stuff down here, I guess. Roads can have texture too, you know, they have, roads have feelings too. happening it's like red over here then it becomes gray and then it becomes 
becomes this yellowish. And then at the very end, super bright yellow. But that's pretty thin. like that and then behind that what is it I think it's maybe that color there Shoulders better, I think. I think I'll survive. With all the color and texture though, I, th I will say heavy paint is best for environments and vehicles. Yeah, um, although there are some people that are doing really crazy portraits with it. I just need to learn <laughs> how to do it. But anyway. There's this guy, um, Odade Steel that does he was doing all these bodybuilders and then he did john wick really nice john wick and morpheus and a lot of really nice portraits okay so for the truck i'm gonna treat it like a giant orange blob first so let's see let's get fill and uh try to with these square compositions it's nice because you can you can kind of guide yourself based off of uh, the proportions to the side. So first of all, let me make it into a square. Okay. So the pro the proportions, uh, let me let me also cover this up. So like where this uh, the end of this um, road meets the yellow grass, that's I would say two thir one third of the way up, so it should be happening around here. So I'm just going just like that. Let's adjust this before we throw in the truck, because once the truck's in there, it's going to be a pain. This all is going to be behind the truck, so I don't care too much. <sighs> okay. Airbrush. I'm going to screw it up, airbrush. And yeah, this this uh, little stream here, guys, it's... Uh, I know a few of you are probably painters, I hope. So, and also I hope you'll join in and paint because, um, I don't know, practice. So I don't feel so alone and isolated. <laughs> but yeah, if you want, feel free to join in. The reference photo should be in the description of the video. And if you want to try heavy paint, the link is there. And, um, oh yeah, so yesterday, um, there's an iOS update and it has this, if you are into that kind of thing, I know you got some of you guys are weirdos and you, you prefer this, but, um, yeah, so that's there in iOS. It's going to, I'm going to try to get it to Android real soon. Be pretty fast.
Okay. Time for the truck. So I'm going to go pretty orange on it. And again, I'm, I'm want, I want to check my proportion. So let's see, this front corner, front corner is about there. The top corner is about here. So look for landmarks. Like this corner of the hood is maybe up here. Okay, I think I've got this wrong already because I feel like this is much narrower on the right side. Incredibly stubby. Let's see, the top of this wheel well is like about in the center of the square. Just constantly checking. Bottom of the wheel, about here. Top of the wheel. Let's see, what other extremes do we have? There's this right side of the Fender. This bed, where does the end of the bed go? It's about a little bit below the middle on the left side and there's a small gap. That's a really important landmark. I'm still using fill brush here to draw the lines. I actually like drawing lines with fill more than uh, draw because I'm a freak like that. Okay. I guess you could draw in color too if you want. Okay, and then once you have the landmarks in, it should sort of fall together here. I'm just going to fill this up. I know it gets it definitely gets more orange to this side. Drawing in some more landmarks. This is probably the hardest part, guys, so it's okay to undo here and try again if things look weird. <laughs> It's also the most important part of the painting. Getting all your proportions in here. I should probably try to get the back wheel in just to double check and make sure everything's okay. 
Sometimes you can't really tell if it's okay until you see the whole thing together. And it, usually when I like right when I finish drawing everything, I'll look at the picture and be like, "Shit, I screwed this up. I screwed that up. I have to go in and fix it." So let's see how how we did today. Maybe the, the wheels feel kind of bluish. Or the tire, sorry. Back tire gets pretty tiny. It's far back there. So for me, it's it's smarter to do like this with the shadow first, and then you get the light shape and draw that over the shadow. That way you don't have to draw it twice. I'm trying to avoid, lately, I'm trying to avoid drawing the same edge twice. <coughs> I mean like, for example, this edge here, I don't want to draw it like the black side first and then and then retrace over that with the orange like that's inefficient right so ra rather than that you want to do do like that first and then like that that way you only draw it once and it's more cleaner that way hey colby hey you know you know you know i don't know where the hat went actually i'm been looking around for it michelle have you seen my red hat what did, did you do something to my red hat? Louis Cole. I just found this guy yesterday. So good. Okay, it looks like um, something's wrong here proportion wise. What did I do? Because the ground... Let's see, maybe it's just thinner.
tracing over the same lines over and over again. Let's make it messy. I can just overpaint this and then maybe chop over it with some trees. Okay, I, can't, I really can't see what the hell I'm doing. Any suggestions to keep your paintings from looking too gray happens to me all the time. Here's what you do. Get your sliders like this. The closer they are together, the more gray it is. So just go like that. <laughs> spread, spread them. Spread them wide. And then, um, oh, another trick is when you're studying from a photo, get the photo on, um, what I do is I just go on Google, uh, Google Photos. Just go on Google Photos and increase the saturation and that should help. So you can just have the saturation there already. Because I have that problem too, I, I tend to be very conservative with color. So I'm, if the photo has color, then that'll help you.
in the pop-ups. Pop-ups and pies. Damn it, I should have gone to black here in the, in the first place. I've redrawn this like 10 times already. So stupid. trying to get the, all the shadows in here the little shadow shapes that's I guess the main main graphic read is just these black shadows everything else is just sort of mid-tony
about this weird rusty uh, not really rusty but just distressed metal Very cool Okay, so this is a good example here. This this little area, instead of drawing this dark shape, I should probably get the, the lighter gray around it first. So let's try that. Let's try to do the light gray first. Maybe it's a little bit darker. That way we can just draw the dark shapes inside without having to re redo everything again. I'll try to make it a little bit darker when it's coming around the corner. Notice that Yuchida Masayaru is a big ol' heavy poly fanboy? Uh, well, I'm a super uh, fan of, of that guy, Yuchida. It's crazy good. I wonder if the account, the, his Instagram account is actually run by him, or, or like, if that's actually him, or is it his, uh, family members doing it all but yeah it's cool sometimes he'll he'll pop by and like a painting or something I bet he would like um, heavy paint, maybe, because it's like sort of like tearing little shapes out with paper, like how he likes to work.
think all the stuff that's coming through this glass should be like a more muted version of, of the background color so you can pick the background and then just make it a little bit darker maybe less saturated and then stick that in there but on this area where the the, the window is actually open then maybe we can go and be a little bit more rich with the color Oh wow. I didn't I didn't realize that. That's awesome. I hope you'll I hope he uses it or I hope he tries it someday. If you guys don't know Masayasu Uchida or sorry, I don't know what is the first name Uchida. You should look up his little documentary and his work. Actually, Michelle showed me his stuff. And he just rips pieces of paper. Um, yeah, he rips pieces of paper and makes these amazing compositions. It's all like construction, well, not construction paper, but some kind of paper. Just the most epic. We should do a study of of this guy on the stream. And we take one of these and try to copy. I, I, I copied this one. And which one? They're all just so awesome. I love how tiny the, like the sense of scale. These clouds look like planets. Anyway, yeah. Look him up. Do we already want some food? I'll try it. Intense.
Maybe Rake would be cool here. song trying to tell me something. This song has something to say. Something I've been struggling with is framing my images and wrangling the proportions when painting from life. Yeah, that's a lot harder to do than it is using a photo because with the photo we can easily say like, oh, this circle is happening at this edge of the photo. So, I don't know what to say, man. Drawing from life is hard. Keep, keep up the struggle. Maybe if you're having trouble with the drawing, just just draw. Don't paint. Painting is like just extra. It's drawing with more trouble. Or just start really small and then you can crop.
Chart topper right here. tree bark to anchor the background yeah I'm gonna keep working on the trees after this, this is, uh, slow going here
super stoked about the heavy paint community is growing. Some super great painters in the game, yeah. There's some monsters out there, guys. It's crazy. I saw a really cool series by um, Patricio Betero, I think, this morning. It's looking awesome. It's really like mid-century style. Graph, super graphic, super simple. Really nice. What time did my painting start to improve and get good? 
I don't know. I'm kind of like a... I'm a very slow... Slow and steady... Kind of a... Learner. So, I've been drawing since... You know, forever, so... I've been drawing seriously since 2003. So I guess... And when I mean seriously, I mean like... A lot. And trying to be professional. So it's taken me a long time, still learning, but I don't know. Some people get there much faster, you know, a couple years. I've seen, you know. I don't know, some people are just really fast. But I'm a turtle. Drop me into a back home.
Hey Moonshot. What content do we consume on YouTube? Um, uh, mostly StarCraft videos. It's not not very healthy, but yeah, StarCraft. In music sometimes. Oh. And laptop reviews. They say you've been one of my top favorite painters for a while. Wow. Thanks, Colby. That's, um. Nobody ever says that to me. <laughs> so. Thanks. Must have missed you saying this in previous streams, but what happened to the other Phil Gradient tool you made a couple streams ago? Um, the Hel the Phil Halo, it's uh, it's not useful yet, I think, the way it was, because it, it's just difficult to get a nice... It looks cool, but it's, it's not practical, so I'm trying to figure out a way to make it practical, and then I'll add it back in, but... The problem is I don't want people to be using it now in this state because let's say they do a painting with it and then later on if I change the brush the way the brush behaves then it's going to screw up all their old paintings with it so I'd rather just um, wait and get it get it all fixed up first but it'll be back don't worry. Or if you have any ideas on how it could work, prop like be useful, because right now I feel like it's like, what happens? You you draw the halo and it always, the uh, gradient always comes back to your pen point, which is not useful. We usually want if I want a rim halo around this rim here, I want the, I want it to like go transparent. Anyway, it's I need to work on that. Hey David, um, which version is it? The the version with the with the Phil Halo is not. It's I don't think I put it out. So you. Yeah. I mean, you'll. You'll uh, you'll you'll get to try it soon. I'm, I need to I need to work on it still. But yeah, I I totally took it out of um, of my build here, because I mean, I was just having real trouble finding uses for it. Okay, I think it would be really cool to get this this texture going through the grill. So we definitely need to have some of this action over here. If I need to repaint it, who cares? It takes two seconds.
Hey, zero bit. Does it seem complicated? How many buttons are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buttons. Is that too many for you? How many buttons do you want? What's your ideal number of buttons? Is this the for sale sign too? Or is that too cheesy? talking about the number of buttons since I'm not an artist the way you draw is very impressive for me it's just the behavior of various tool which behavior in particular oh thanks but yeah which behavior I'm genuinely curious truck this is maybe Ian might know I don't know if Ian's still here but I have no idea what this is Yes, toilet, toilet poppy. The D tool is interesting the way it fills the colors. Oh, this one right here. Yeah, it, it's basically you, you, you draw and then it fills the shape. I don't know. 
It's a, it's a very simple concept, but a lot of painting programs do not have this for some reason. But it's the tool that I use the most. So zero bit, how would you change that tool to make it more simple? We usually do so a little bit of brainstorming in here every every time, so Suggestions are welcome. The tool seems simple, but I would like to know the color palette that it will paint before the actual paint. But I guess that behavior is... Well, the color that it's going to paint is up here, this, this circle. So depending on what color you choose, it's going to paint in that color. This over here is the um, jitter slider, so if you go higher, it's going to randomize the color a little bit. If you go less, then it's going to be less random or zero randomness. But I, I do need to label this slider probably, this one and this one, to be a little bit more useful. This one's size and this one is color jitter. Maybe the color jitter would show the jitter in, in, in the circle actually. Hmm. Hi John Soul. How are you? Do we know each other? <laughs> Who am I talking to? But yeah, you're right. This this is a little bit confusing. It does. It, it does confuse a lot of people um, when they first open it because it's like, oh, why are my colors going all crazy? So this needs to be somehow described. Hmm.
shit. When did I draw that crap over here? Oh, you don't, I don't know, we don't know each other. Okay, well, now we do. Hello and welcome. Welcome to ZomboCon. You can do anything at ZomboCon. ZomboCon is the place where anything can happen at ZomboCon. Welcome to ZomboCon. Let's go visit Zombocom for for any of, any of you youngsters out here. Take a little visit to Zombocom. Oh no! Flash! Shit! Welcome to Zombocom. Welcome. 
This is Zombocar. Welcome to Zombocar. I love some book. Okay, I think we're almost there. Welcome to Zombocom. This is Zombocom. Oh, damn it. Let's see if I can find Uniqlo.
So I played that this music for like a whole term in college and my, all my roommates hated me. Um, let's see. Has the fill tool ever been able to cross back in on itself? No. It's a limitation of the engine I'm using. But um, I've uh, grown to appreciate it, <laughs> I guess. It's a little bit wonky, but once you get used to it, it's actually useful. Because then you can do um, straight edges pretty nicely. So I usually, when I'm trying to draw a shape, I'll I'll use the straight edge. So when you use fill, you always get at least one straight edge like that. So if I need to chop something, I'll go like that, and then chop it here. Or let's say I need to, you know, cut around the background here. I'll go like that, and then like that, like that, like that. And you can draw around stuff like that. How friggin' old am I? I'm 30. Um. Zombo paint, yes, Zombo paint. That would be. That would be. I thought you were amazing when you catch you a few months later. You literally made a painting software. Yep, that's what happens when you leave me alone for too long. Start getting into new new projects. I'm all about the projects. All right, I think we're almost done today. Pretty satisfied with this one. I think it's fun. Let's see. Should I do that, that for sale sign? Is that too cheesy? Let's see what it looks like, and then if it's horrible, then I'll take it out. So it's kind of a bluish color. I'm already liking it. Faded, sun bleached, perhaps. <sighs> and then this super bright pink ish yellow or or red I think is really cool my brain stopped working guys I'm sorry there yes all done right oh let's add in some leaves might as well since we're here, so this is pretty high color jitter back here. Then the street should be much lower version of color jitter.
these leaves are almost the same value as the road. Actually, a lot of colors going on. Just need some gritty grittiness on the road. Maybe it's more just directionality. So it looks like it's going that way. Which I think that helps with. Could probably say that the tire gets a little bit darker. Oh, I think this is done now. Okay, guys, have a good day. See you next time. Whoa.